As of April 3rd, 2020, more than 1,015,000 people in the world are infected by the novel coronavirus. As a result, a third of the global population is under lockdown. Factories, restaurants, shopping malls, department stores, even convenience stores and almost all types of businesses are suddenly stopped. On March 27, 2020, the International Monetary Fund declared that we have entered a global economic recession. We have reassessed the prospects for growth for 2020 and 2021. It is now clear that we have entered a recession as bad or worse than in 2009. Hello everyone, I'm Anna, your Knowledge Host. As you have seen, the International Monetary Fund declared that we have entered a global economic recession caused by the novel coronavirus pandemic and by procrastination and ignorance in decision-making. We can see how severe the problem is and the mistakes we made in taking the wrong measures. IMF expects that it might be worse than the last financial tsunami in 2009 and some economists predict that it is possibly approaching the levels of the Great Depression that lasted from 1929 to 1933. Now, fears are growing that the downturn could be far more long-lasting than initially feared as governments intensified restrictions on businesses to halt the spread of the pandemic. Global stock markets also resonate with the fear of the future and jam on the brakes, leaving us in a historical free fall. This is a chart of the 2008 financial crisis. Over the course of 517 days, the stock market dropped by more than 56%. Now this is the 2020 economic collapse so far. Over the course of just 21 days, the market has dropped by roughly 20%, the world has seemingly shut down, and we just might be on the worst economic trajectory in history. You know, if you go back to the Great Depression, uh, the stock market helped bring on the Great Depression. The same thing is true now. Uh, the stock market is going down because uh, the realization that the economy is going to be very constrained. People are uh, not going to work, uh, businesses are, are shutting down. We've seen an 80% drop in automotive sales in countries like China, and this effect trickles down. You see, if car companies are seeing a drop in sales and revenue, then so will its suppliers. And if the suppliers see a drop in revenue, then so will the raw industries that work with the suppliers. And this effect radiates to all other companies that are connected to the automotive industry. And what else happens when a company sees a drop in sales or revenue? Well, we tend to see things like layoffs or even bankruptcies. And those things lead to a higher unemployment rate, which would lead to less purchases being made by consumers, which would lead to less sales being made by businesses. And this cycle continues until the economy hits a low point like the Great Recession or the Great Depression. Who is Jack Chappell doesn't matter. What matters is that the chart in his video is true evidence of what he calls the economic trajectory. And it shows that the latest stock market drop is a free fall. Even the Federal Reserve economist's projection of the unemployment rate supports his conclusion and shockingly reveals the term of the Great Depression. Economists from the Fed's St. Louis office took a look at the numbers and projected that coronavirus-related job losses could total 47 million. When added to those already without work, that would mean a 32.1% unemployment rate. It's a figure larger than the 24.9% unemployment rate we saw during the Great Depression. The estimates in China are ridiculous. They changed the estimate from 5.4% to 1.5%. That's a huge difference in scale. The huge drop in estimate is related to the unemployment rate. Would the unemployment rate really deteriorate that badly? It depends on how long the recovery from the coronavirus takes. If the recovery happens in June, the estimate won't prove correct. But if the recovery drags on till next year, the estimate could come to fruition. Aren't these figures horrifying? After we have seen these indicators leading to the Great Depression, the question we have now is could we have an opportunity to escape from the Great Depression? 
The 2001 Nobel Prize economics winner Joe Stiglitz believes that because we have no certainty the virus will be gone by the end of the second quarter, if it lasts through the summer, then all the effects will be amplified, unless, he said, we otherwise have to take appropriate measures. Going forward, the fact that so much wealth has been destroyed on people's balance sheet, uh, people, uh, retirement accounts have been wiped out. Uh, that will mean that when the economy recovers, when the disease gets under control, uh, people may uh, be not in position to spend in the way that they were before. Uh, and so it, it could help prolong the economic downturn. Uh, unless we take appropriate measures. The Financial Times in the UK reports that facing this economic storm could be more painful than the 2008 financial crisis, and world leaders are being urged to deliver a robust and coordinated fiscal response to shield companies and households from the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. Summarized government bailout details include state loans or credit guarantees for companies, income subsidies for affected workers, tax referrals, social security deferrals or subsidies and debt repayment holidays. Going forward, people are talking about the possibility of a Great Depression. If more and more businesses, especially small medium enterprises, cannot operate and shut down, I think that once these businesses are shuttered, to start them up again will be difficult because the employees will have moved on. Okay, let's get our eyes away from the bad news for now. There are still some optimists having a better outlook of the downturn. According to the estimation of Dr. David Kelly of JP Morgan, the after-pandemic recovery might be starting next year and the real recovery will be happening in the year 2022. Dr. David Kelly is the chief global strategist and head of the Global Market Insights strategy team for JP Morgan Asset Management. He has over 20 years of experience. Because the problem is that even if we uh, this virus is contagious enough and deadly enough that if we all relax because the numbers go down, then the numbers are just going to go right back up again and we're really not going to be able to get back to normal until, you know, what I would call VC day, which is vaccine for coronavirus day. And when we all line up and CV, you know, outside CVS or Walgreens and get and get the vaccine, then we can get back to play. But that's you know that could still be a year away. At that point, though, the economy will absolutely surge, and we know that. Following his logic, as long as we can have the vaccine, our economy will be able to get back to the good old days. I sincerely wish that this is a perfect trend projection with a perfect result. 那個亞洲,我有台灣的經濟運作,我想是最正常的,對不對?上個 is operating the most normally in Asia, right? Those going to school still attend school. Those taking online classes continue on, and there haven't been any suspension of schools, right? It's also rarely heard in Xinzhu Science Park. There is about 10,000 workers furloughed or unemployed. Under such circumstances, comparatively, Taiwan is doing pretty well. Compared to the Great Depression, this is just a shock, a sudden short-term shock. Let's see. C plus I. So that if consumer spending is maintained, that's why we are talking about stimulating spending. Thus C is very important. This is our first measure. And I, investment, is the second. The investment in businesses, the government bailouts, are for encouraging businesses to invest. It's very important. As a result of the stay-at-home and social distancing orders, thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, the stay-at-home economy is rapidly booming. Before the pandemic, people were already buying things online, chatting with pals, making new friends, learning new languages and techniques, playing online games and, in fact, doing everything. Along with the outbreak, stay-at-home businesses are totally unleashed. For our members, we are working on a new episode with Funday magazine to reveal the outbreak of the stay-at-home economy. You'll see it in our next episode. 
I'm Anna. Thanks for watching this episode. You'll find more on Fundy website. Stay tuned.